Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Algorithm Mind. My name is Asan Khurram and this channel I teach programming skills in Python, MATLAB or R programming. I also teach theoretical concepts as well as practical programming skills in data analysis, statistical analysis, data science or machine learning. So if you're a person who wants to learn programming from scratch or if you're a person who wants to excel his career in data science, I request you to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell icon button. As I have stated earlier that I am going to produce a series of videos regarding statistical analysis in Python. So regarding that context, I am going to produce, uh, in today's lecture, I am going to discuss about the introduction to hypothesis testing. So we will, it will be a comprehensive lecture and we are going to discuss a lot more about the theoretical aspect of those uh, hypothesis testing. Once we have discussed that, then we will move towards uh, uh, practical programming section where we'll exercise that uh, knowledge with the help of Python programming. So uh, to discuss about hypothesis testing, hypothesis testing is a statistical method used to make the decisions about the population parameter based on sample data. So you have a population data set that is quite huge in quantity, then you have a sample data set. Now you are making or you are estimating your hypothesis uh, about uh, uh, some parameters about the population. And you are assuming that this population parameter might be this or that. Based on that, you form a hypothesis. And in order to evaluate whether that hypothesis is true or false, you will use sample data instead of population data. So at its core, it involves comparing a hypothesis or a claim about a population parameter to the evidence provided by the sample data. The goal is to determine whether the observed data provided enough evidence to reject or fail to reject the hypothesis. So we have a problem. Based on that problem, we will formulate a hypothesis. And this hypothesis can further be classified into null and alternative hypothesis, which I will discuss in a bit uh, later on within this lecture. So what is the importance of hypothesis testing? The uh, hypothesis testing is crucial in various fields, including science, business, medicines, or social sciences, as it helps in drawing conclusions from the data. Hypothesis testing provide a systematic way to evaluate competing theories or hypotheses based on empirical evidence. It helps make informed decisions. By testing hypotheses, we can make decisions with confidence uh, interval about population parameter, which is essential for effective decision making. Finally, it assesses the validity of the theories. Hypothesis testing allows researchers to assess the validity of theories or claim about a population by subjecting them to empirical security. So now you understand the concept of hypothesis testing and what is the importance of hypothesis testing. Let's move on and discuss about t-test, which is a one of a way how we can actually test a hypothesis and which will help us to identify whether this hypothesis is true or false. So we have first, we have t-test. A t-test is a statistical test used to determine if there is a significant difference between the mean of two groups. It is commonly used when the sample size is small or when the population standard deviation is unknown. So basically, it is used to determine whether there is a significant difference between the means of the two group. So Let's move on and actually discuss about what is actually alternate hypothesis and what is null hypothesis. In hypothesis testing, we start by defining two hypotheses. First one is null hypothesis. This is the default assumption about the population parameter. It represents the status quo or no effect at all. The null hypothesis typically states that there is no significant difference between the means of the two groups. So the two groups we are actually comparing, the, so the null hypothesis states that there is no significant difference between the means of the two groups. Or in other contexts, we can say that there is no effect of one variable on another variable. So they are not correlated or co there is no any correlation between those two variables. So that's what we do in null hypothesis. So let's move on and discuss about alternate hypothesis. So this is the hypothesis that contradicts the null hypothesis. Okay, it contradicts the null hypothesis assumption. It represents the researcher's claim or effect of interest. Remember that the choice of null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis depends on the specific research question and the, to the context of your data. 
adjust this hypothesis accordingly based on your scenario so this null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis um, will change based on the problem you are currently facing and you're trying to solve it through the help of data for example a null hypothesis could be says could be that we can say that the two variables are not uh, linearly related there is no correlation between them so that's the null hypothesis what would be the alternate hypothesis is to reject the null hypothesis and we say that there is a correlation between the two variables and they are linearly related so that's what we mean by null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis now you know understand what is hypothesis testing how we formulate null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis what kind of tests we do in order to evaluate null hypothesis and uh, alternate hypothesis but how do we actually evaluate the, that whether we should reject the null hypothesis or we should accept the null hypothesis this is where p values alpha level of significance comes handy so i'm going to help you understand those concepts with the help of simple definitions so the p value is the measure used in hypothesis testing to determine the strength of evidence against the null hypothesis it represents the probability of observing a test statics extreme as or more extreme than than the observed one assuming that the null hypothesis is true basically it means that it observes the probability of having the extreme case when we assume that the null hypothesis is true when we assume that there is no difference uh, between the two main groups or when they assume that there is no correlation between the two variable in that case we observe that what is the extreme value of having that there might be some case that there is a correlation between the two variables or the mean of the two groups is uh, varies significantly so so p value signifies that aspect of uh, quantity on the other hand if the p value is uh, so if the p value is small typically less than the p determinant threshold often denoted as alpha it suggests that the observed data are likely to occur under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true this provides evidence against the null hypothesis that provides the evidence to reject the null hypothesis on the other hand if the p value is large it suggests that the observed data are reasonably likely to occur under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true in this case there is a sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis there is insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis in that case we have to accept the null hypothesis so now you know about p value now there is another term called level of significance alpha that determines the threshold whether to accept the null hypothesis or reject the null hypothesis based on the p value so basically this level of significance alpha is there to judge p value whether to judge the p value whether p value is greater than a specific value whether p value is less than a specific value so the level of significance denoted as alpha is the threshold used to determine whether the p value is small enough to reject the null hypothesis it represents the maximum acceptable probability of taking a type 1 error which is the error of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually true okay so it's is it is the probability of making a type 1 error and what is the type 1 error it is the error of rejecting the null hypothesis when it was actually true commonly used values of alpha are 0.05 which is 5% and 0.01 1% these value indicate the acceptable risks of falsely rejecting the null hypothesis choosing the appropriate level depends on the various factors including the consequences of making a type 1 error and the standard of the specific field of discipline now you understand the concept about uh, p values now you understand the concept about alpha how you can actually use p values and alpha to make your final decision and conclusion to accept or reject null hypothesis so if the p value is less than or equal to alpha it is conventionally considered statistically significant this indicates that the observed data provides strong evidence against the null hypothesis and therefore we reject the null hypothesis in the favor of alternate hypothesis conversely if the p value is greater than alpha we defy, we fail to reject the null hypothesis this suggests that the observed data do not provide sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis and we do not have significant evidence to support the alternate hypothesis so if p value is greater than alpha we are failed to reject the null hypothesis 
and this suggests that the observed data do not provide sufficient evidence to reject the uh, null hypothesis. Okay, so in that case, we have to actually accept the null hypothesis. So now I know it's a bit of a lengthy theoretical section. So let's move on and actually exercise the what have you learned in the theoretical section and actually exercise the concept in Python programming. So in order to exercise those concepts in Python programming, first of all, I'm going to import important libraries which I'm going to use in order to exercise those concepts. The first library I'm going to import is import NumPy as NumPy. Uh, NumPy is an important library in Python which is uh, useful for numeric computing and also doing uh, array operations. So I'm going to import NumPy by using this Python statement here, import num NumPy as NP. Then I'm also going to import the uh, function or more method t test dot underscore ind which is used to perform t test and uh, i'm importing it by using from the module stats so which is a part of scipy library so i'm going to import this uh, function here by using this path and statement from scipy dot stats import t test underscore ind so once we have imported our libraries what we are going to do we are going to generate some data based on which we are going to perform our hypothesis testing. So uh, first of all, I'm setting the random seed of the randomly number generated uh, is equal to 42. This Python statement here will help me ensure that whenever the script is run again and again, I will have the same numbers of random number generated irrespective of how many times the script has been run. This is useful for reproductibility where you don't want, actually want to, to have a different result when you are showing this result to someone else or even you want running this again, script again and again. So we are setting the random seed of randomly number generated by using this Python statement here. NP random seed within those uh, round brackets, I'm passing input argument 42. So once we have set that, <coughs> now I'm going to uh, generate data for two groups, group one and group four, group two. Uh, for In order to generate data for group one, I'm going to initialize a variable named group one, and I'm going to create its value by using a uh, numpy method or function we, where np stands for numpy random module and normal is the function and i'm passing three input arguments to this function loc is equal to 10 scale is equal to 2 and size is equal to 30. the loc is equal to 10 will help us ensure that we are getting uh, random numbers generated from a normal distribution that has a mean of 10. so here loc is equal to 10 signifies the mean then we have scale is equal to two, which will help us signify, which will help us ensure that we are getting a random number from a normal distribution that has a standard deviation of two. And the final input argument is the size, is the number of uh, elements we want to generate. In our case, we only want 30 elements to be generated. So this will uh, return us an array of 30 elements, which has a normal distribution with the mean 10 and standard deviation of two. And in the same way, we are going to generate the data for group two, but in for group two, we are setting the mean equal to 12 instead of two. So that's how I generated the data for group one and group two. And once I have generated the data, I'm simply going to print the first five values by using this index, index notation here, group one, then square bracket, and then uh, colon five so colon five it means that up to uh, the fourth index okay so where five is not inclusive it will, will generate values from zero to four so zero one two three and four so i'm generating five i'm printing just five values of group one and group two now, once I have generated data and printed its value, let's move on and actually conduct our test. If you recall that for the test, we actually have imported the method or function from scipy library and its module stat, ttest underscore ind. <coughs> I'm, uh, first of all, I'm initializing two variables, tstatics and pvalue, and I'm creating its value by calling the function 
T test underscore IND and I'm passing two input argument. The first input argument is the group one data and the second input argument is the group two data. So basically it's the two groups where I actually want to compare by using T test. And it will return as a value of T statics, which is the measure of difference between the two means of group uh, considering the within group variance. Then we have P value which is uh, again I have started, uh, discussed in detail about the p-value, significance of p-value, uh, which is the statistical significant for considering that to be considering that uh, extreme case in uh, considering the assumption that null hypothesis is true. So after like running this block of code here, I will get the values of t-static and p-value. Once I get the value of T starting in P value, what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to print those values with the help of this simple print function. I am setting alpha is equal to 0 0.05 in our case. And uh, once I have set alpha, then I'm going to simply print the values of uh, alpha, T statics and P value. Now you can see that the value of P is quite less than 0 0.05 or quite less than alpha, our value of p is 3.17 exponential 5 and the value of t static is minus 4.5129. Now based on those p value and alpha we are going to assess our hypothesis. Uh, we are going to judge whether we should accept the null hypothesis or whether we should reject the null hypothesis. So in that case we are going simply going to use if and else statement. We will write if statement and then we are passing the condition here p value if p value which we have calculated by using t test is less than alpha which we have defined earlier 0 0.05 if that's true print reject the null hypothesis and group has different means <clears throat> and if that's not true if p value is greater than alpha or equal to alpha we say that we fail to reject the null hypothesis or which means that no, there is no significant difference between the means of the group. <clears throat> In our case, uh, p value is actually greater than alpha. So we say that uh, uh, p value is less than alpha. So we say that we reject the null hypothesis. <clears throat> An alternate hypothesis accepted. The group have a different means. That's how you can actually uh, conduct a hypothesis testing in Python programming. And finally, we are going to print a value of p by using this print function and uh, using f-string method. So for those of you who don't have an idea about f-string method, f-string method help us allow, allow us to embed uh, variables within a string text. So in order to use the f-string method, we are first of all, I'm going to write f, then I'm put quotation mark, then I'm going to write whatever the text we I want to display. It. Then for the variable that I want to embed in the string, I'm passing it within the curly brackets. And I'm then I'm finally, I'm declaring the variable which I want to embed in the string. And I'm putting colon, then dot for f. This will help me ensure that I'm getting the values up to four decimals point. So that's how you can actually conduct a, a hypothesis testing in Python programming. I hope this lecture has been helpful to you and uh, you are able to understand the concept as well as practically implement that concept in Python programming. So if you have any questions regarding today's lecture or any question regarding data analysis, data science or regarding your career, feel free to write down a comment in the, or if you feel free to write down your questions in the comment section below, I will be happy to help you out and write down a detailed answer for your question. That's it for now and I will catch you soon in the next video.